Hello. Pat uh, in the cockpit. Bear with me one second. I am making sure my stream is up and running. Bear with me. And it looks like it's live. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, Pat in the cockpit. Uh, today's not a, um, a flight day, at least uh, right now, a streaming day. We're going to do a little um, uh, video on uh, an installation. So uh, today's August 2nd. Uh, we've received some parts from Flight Illusions. They're in the Netherlands. They make very gorgeous uh, panel uh, uh, motorized uh, clocks and uh, gauges for different aircraft and my sim is f full of flight illusion gauges I have about 10 or 12 and I will show you some of them uh, let me show you in the cockpit today specifically we're gonna talk about clocks and adapting clocks but in this plane I have um, let's see um, let's zoom in here flight illusions brake pressure gauge dual flap gauge I have a yaw damper. These standby gauges right here have just been returned to me from Fly Illusions. We'll be installing those, probably not testing them in this video, but they're all motorized, fully motorized Fly Illusion gauges. Let's see if we can uh, go ahead and they're just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is a uh, attitude indicator right here. Uh, right here, this is where the yaw damper goes. Attitude indicator. This is a standby altimeter and indicated airspeed. And this is a dual needle VOR ADF uh, device right down here. Very nice. Anyway, um, again, we have uh, another clock over there. And up in top, if we go up top, we have a pressurization panel dual needle uh, climb and pressure and climb indicator here and whoops whoops we're gonna lose our camera if we don't if we're not careful up here we have a, a, a dual needle uh, bleed gauge and over here we have a um, fuel uh, uh, APU EGT and here we have fuel temp and what else do we have in this plane cabin temperature and finally at the very top we have crew oxygen so those are the flight illusion gauges that we have in the plane they're all motorized and then we'll work off a uh, little I.O. board that's located underneath the knee pad. Let me zoom back out here so you can get my mug in the picture. Hopefully my volume's okay. I don't I see two people in live chat, but I don't see anybody saying anything. Anyway, so today's project is to show how to adapt flight deck solutions um, hardware is made by flight deck solutions the MIP or possibly even Jetmax if you have Jetmax how do we uh, use flight illusions clocks or chronometers in flight deck solutions panels their their whole patterns are different and it's been a contention but uh, fortunately flight deck solutions and flight illusions haven't been able to uh, rectify so we, we got a workaround um, that uh, we're gonna show you today so to start with let's show you uh, what present what the default flight deck solutions uh, when you buy it is it's a um, uh, a fake clock it looks like this and you can take that bezel off and it's got a little piece of plastic that's got the picture of a clock on it and a, a clear piece of plexiglass so when you buy it, it looks like that. And it mounts right there. And we have a 
piece of foam that we've cut out that replicates this panel right down here. Actually, it's for the captain's side uh, for demonstration purposes. This is what we said to flight illusions so they could help us. So I'll just show you how this piece of foam, how this clock fits in the back. It fits in from the back and kind of looks like that. And we'll take that panel out and demonstrate in a bit. So I just want to show you what we're dealing with today. It, it looks real. It's got all the right little uh, bezels on it and buttons uh, that make it look real. So, But we wanted motorized, motorized gauges. It's been a, a nice project. Okay, so presently I'm going to... Let's see, I think what I'm going to do now is take this panel out. So I'm going to zoom in on this panel so you can watch me take that out. So I'm going to have to focus on, I swear I'm going to lose this camera off the edge here if I'm not careful. There we go, I locked it down. So let's zoom in on this panel here. And we'll take the screwdriver. It has six little screws. On the, around the periphery, I've taken these two out, and there's four left to do. So let me yank those babies out. And uh, I'm going to reach over. Um, just so um, a warning, don't ever mess with fly illusion gauges. Don't do anything to them until you've unplugged their power supply. You do not want to plug in a fly illusion gauges the ribbon cables well the, the power supply is hooked up to the io board uh, you'll you'll destroy them it's really easy to forget trust me i've been there it wasn't pretty i'm gonna take these six little screws out say the top two i've already taken out i think these are 632 screws not sure. Okay. Got all those out. And I'm going to pull the panel away. I presently have a Flight Illusions clock installed in there. And behind it are two ribbon cables. And since the power supply is unplugged, we can lift these ribbon cables off. There's one ribbon cable, and there's the other. So on flight illusion gauges, let me focus in here. There's, each gauge has two little ports for the ribbon cable, so they daisy chain. And on the I.O. board, you can have, uh, there's four ports, and each port can handle 16 daisy chain devices. And there's no other powers, power needed besides what comes down the ribbon cable. It's very nice. You can see the little motor for the clock right here. And... I don't want to put it on autofocus because it'll constantly go in and out of focus. Um, got the electronics. You can see along the side and the front. So this is the one from Flight Deck Solutions. I'm going to put them up next to each other. And you can see what the two of them look like. Similar in size and appearance. And uh, the one from Flight Illusions, if you compare it to a real one, it uh, looks quite quite uh, similar. The buttons actually work. Nice clicky noise. It's a nice piece. All their gauges uh, are are well done. They're not they're not uh, poor. They're very good manufacturing. I'm very impressed with the quality of their work. Uh, just looking at the, the triple one I got, it, it's obvious. So. Uh, I'm going to show you how to remove this. Now, how did I solve this problem previously? Um, I got a bezel adapter from Flight Deck Solutions a long time ago. And it was very thin and, and it cracked. But once you put this in this adapter, let me see if I can zoom back out here a little bit. There you go. Once you put this adapter in, it's never going to come out. And I've tried to get some replacements or some for other people and uh, not had any luck. So I've approached Flight Deck Solutions and I sent them my Flight Deck Solutions clock and a panel and they made me some adapters. So that's what we're going to show you today. So to remove the one I have, 
um, Flight Deck Solutions, when they provide their clocks, they give screws. Um, I've used little uh, cap screws. Uh, they're, I think, what was it, th maybe three millimeter, 56 th thread, little cap screws. Itsy bitsy, I'll just take those off right now. I'm gonna... To hold this together and you can see that they're absolutely minuscule um, there may be a couple millimeters high thread little little cap screw I don't know if I can even focus on that there you go it's a cap uh, Allen cap screw a little shoulder on it it's about an inch long Again, probably at any hardware store. Now, when you purchase a clock from Flight Illusions, they do provide the necessary mounting hardware and the ribbon cables. So that shouldn't be a problem. When I, whoops, we're definitely out of focus here. When I originally did this, um, um, I didn't have the screws. So let's take these out. This is a 1 16th Allen wrench I'm using for these little screws. And again, these screws are ones that I procured. Uh, when you get a clock from Flight Illusions, they provide the screws and the ribbon cables, and they'll provide longer ribbon cables if you request it for your installation. They're really good about that. The only downside is they're in the Netherlands. And uh, there is a shipping cost involved. They usually ship DHL, which I really like. They provide a very good service, and I received this stuff. The tracking was good, straight from the Netherlands to L.A. down to me in a couple of days. But there's a cost involved um, with that. So you don't want to ship them back and forth. Um, anyway. Or when you buy them, buy a set. Don't buy onesies. Buy a full set, like a MIP or an overhead or this full set of clocks so they don't have to continually pay the the uh, airfare okay so I've taken those four little screws out and I'm gonna lift off the bezels that flight deck solutions provided me originally and I'm gonna show you those I've got a pair of them some there for now so what you're seeing is the flight uh, flight illusions and flight deck Flight Deck Solutions, Flight Illusions gauges. And you can see, let me zoom in on this, it, how it fits in. Just fits in the back. There's the clock. And it fits in the back like that. The problem is the holes, the mounting holes for Flight Illusions, don't match up with the holes on Flight Deck Solutions. The hole patterns are different, and that's the whole problem. Hole. <laughs> I just made a joke, a pun. <laughs> okay. So, that's what we're going to work on today, is how we resolve that problem. The looseness in there is not the problem. It's the problem that the holes don't line up. So, to show you the clock, let's see if I can get it in focus here. The clock, very nice clock. The buttons work. The software works really good with it. Here's the back of it. You can see the motor and the electronics. It's a, a, a nice device. It's well done. It's, it's quality. It doesn't feel cheap. It's got a nice feel to it. OK, so let me show you the adapters that Flight Deck Solutions provided me with previously. And one of them's actually cracked. It looks like they're 3D printed. And one of them's got a little crack in it right here. Anyway, I use a pair of them to thicken it up. And what these bezels do is modify the, make it so you can, these line up with the holes on Flight Deck, Flight Illusions. But don't line up the holes in the panel. So the, the big trick to this is how do you make these holes line up with the holes in the flight illusions? To do that, 
we use a file. So all we did, since the holes didn't line up, oh, before I get any farther, let me show you the the new adapters that Flight Illusions made for me. So what would happen is if you ordered a set of, uh, a set of let me zoom back out a little bit, because if you ordered a set of uh, Flight Illusions clocks, you would request a set of adapters. And the adapters are quite slim, similar to the ones from that were available at one time from Flight Deck Solutions, but no longer apparently. They're similar uh, in appearance, but these ones from Flight Deck Solutions are a, a, a little bit beefier. They're still very fragile. Um, it's a one-time use. Once you put it in, you're never going to take it out. So it looks like it might be 3D printed. It, it's got a little bit of flex to it here. It's um, and you can see the where well, the hole is, there's not a lot of meat there between the hole and the edge. And on the panel, that's the problem. That the uh, holes for the flight illusions don't line up with the holes on the panel. So what I did is I took a file and I put it here where the metal was. And I just, let me see if I can zoom in and focus. You can see where I took the file here, right here, and all I did was file down till the metal broke right there on the edge, right on the edge. It just went back and forth on each corner, right like this, and made a little semicircle. You can see the little semicircle here. And I did it on all three corners. It it broke the the edge of the metal slightly, and that's not a big deal. It took a little bit of filing. It's got a little extra half moon semicircle in here. So when you do that, it allows this adapter plate, be it from Flight Deck Solutions or the one I got from Flight Illusions, to line up so you can put the gauge behind it and still have a panel to, uh, to screw in against. So we'll put the bezel on this side. And we'll take the clock and put it on this side, just like that. Let me zoom back out. There. So we'll put the clock in from this side, right like that. And then we'll take the bezel and lay it on top, just like that. I'm only going to use one today. Might want to use two later. So I'm going to take the screw. Let me lay one of the screws there so it doesn't hit the ground. Take my Allen wrench and set it right here. Actually, I'm going to lower the camera. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave it right where it is. I'm going to put this screw in here and just kind of through the cut in the metal and find the hole for the flight illusions. You can finger it through and feel it there. And put the Allen wrench on there and just get it started. I'm not going to screw it. I just want to get it started in the hole. Just like that. Now, the hole that this goes into, the screw on the Fly Illusions, is sort of like a very hard, back here, it's a very hard, hard, rubbery foam. So it's not really a, a pre-threaded. It's sort of like when you screw something in, it, 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 pre -th it post threads. So it's real hard, hard plastic for their mounting hardware. So there's one screw started. Then I'm going to come down here to this next corner on the opposite side and do the same thing. Just kind of get it started. Find the hole. You can almost feel it. And get it started like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do the third one. Same thing. Get it started. The whole trick here is to cut the metal of the Flight Illusions metal plate enough so these screws you drop through um, line up with the holes in the flight illusion gauges with the metal there that I cut away before that 
they didn't line up. So this was the little trick was to cut the metal there. I'll put this last screw in here by you can actually feel the screw going into the hole. There we go. So I've got all four uh, screws started and you can see it's just it's just moving around. So I'm going to hold it by the bottom and just take one of the screws and just start spinning it around to draw everything up together very slowly. I'm not going to tighten it up. I'm just going to bring it down to about right there and come over to the other side. I've had this in and out multiple times, and this hard plastic on the flight illusion gauges that the screws mount into uh, doesn't uh, tend to strip out. It's kind of a nice hard rubber that that uh, threads that grip. The screws that Flight Tech Solutions uh, Flight Illusions provides are a little different than these. They're a little coarser, I think, but they fit the holes that they provide, and and they easily fit the the rubber because they're provided by Flight Illusions. I just like these little metal cap screws because they look good. They look very aircrafty. Okay, and I'm going to start drawing this up ever so tightly so it's just a little loose. It's still a little loose. Bring the screws all the way down so they just touch, but not tight. And there's a reason for that. Bear with me one second. Then, you'll see we still have a little slop still moving around. So, if I move it around, you cannot see the hole. You can't see the cutout. So, that's good. You can put it anywhere you want. I'll just drop it down to the bottom. Hold it with my finger down here where I want it and just tighten everything up. The whole trick here is you don't want to tighten so much that you crack the, the adapter. Just enough. There. And there. And the last screw. Okay, and you can see it's not moving. That should be good enough. It is, uh, what's the technical term? The eagle has landed. So it's in there good and tight. I haven't cracked the bezel. It looks really good. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. You can see it looks good all the way around. It looks absolutely fabulous. Um, as usual, I go and tighten things till I break them. So we're going to do that next. That was a joke. That's good. That's good. So uh, what I'm going to say is you don't need two bez two adapters per be uh, clock, just one. Uh, it seems to, it looks really good. I mean, that is, that is just a perfect solution for a, um, for a, uh, a misfit between Flight Illusions hole pattern and Flight Deck Solutions panel. Here's the back. And it just, I'm going to call that 100% success, uh, successful. Uh, Mathis at Flight Illusions asked me to, to let him know how this works. And I have a couple other buddies that uh, have gauges like this and or want to order them and want to know this solution. So what we do now is we go back over to refocusing. We'll just reinstall this over here. So we'll do that by hooking up the two ribbon cables. Push that one in there. And that one, they got a little key on the bottom, so you can't get them backwards like I just did.
and then we'll shove it in there like that and put the four the six screws in in just a minute um, so my flight illusions io board goes to that clock oh to this flaps gauge over to to this clock up to the compass and they have a separate uh, ribbon cable that goes just to the overhead and a separate ribbon cable that goes just to the standby gauges and, and the uh, yaw damper the flight illusions io board has four ports and you can put a maximum of 16 uh, devices from flight illusions on each one and they all have id numbers and they automatically find each other i think that they maximum current draw on any one device is 20 milliamps so so there's no sense of me putting those screws back in right now. I could do that later and power everything up. Um, so I'll keep these old flight deck solutions um, um, adapters. Uh, someday somebody's going to need a set. So bottom line is uh, it's uh, it's a success. The adapter plate that Flight uh, Illusions uh, made for me to test works great uh, i'm going to send a set to my buddy mike in florida and jeff out in uh, i'm sorry jim out in uh, arizona is going to order some clocks and he'll order the adapters with it and there is a solution flight deck solutions provide flight deck solutions that makes the uh, the plane they do provide a clock solution it's a vga clock uh, fairly massive it's actually got a screen on it, it mounts behind there and it, it integrates with sim avionics software and um, I'm using uh, I previously had sim avionics with p3d and I was pleased with it but I wanted to try x-plane so for the last couple of years I've been flying x-plane and um, let me focus this a little bit um, the x-plane software solution doesn't work with <laughs> excuse me the flight deck solutions clocks and I I also wanted to um, use all flight illusions clocks. I mean, uh, motorized gauges. So, um, so we we went that way. So there is two solutions here for clocks. Um, uh, one is flight deck solutions with sim avionics. If you're using P3D, or if you're not, or you want to have full set of gauges, I would. Uh, uh, highly recommend Flight Illusions. There's another company in the United States. Uh, actually, there's a couple companies. Open Cockpits. There's another one in the United States that make gauges. Uh, some of them use Mopi Flight, uh, Arduino cards. There's different solutions. Um, uh, I, I find that the Flight Illusion gauges are probably the highest quality ones I've seen out there. And their software solution is either G-Step um, or um, uh, Air Manager by Sim. Sim uh, innovations and uh, and I really like the air manager solution by sim AV, uh, sim innovations it, it seems that we're using that now and uh, it seems to be the solution I want to go with so feel free to leave any questions um, contact me on my YouTube we're gonna call this a success and shut this this stream down uh, we're gonna do the other one over there actually we don't need to we can leave the adapter that's there you'll never know the difference but mainly this was to let people know that this this solution is available. Okay, so I'm going to shut down the stream. Thanks for being here. I don't, I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about. Again, I want to show you that the next thing we'll be working on is installing these standby gauges. Um, hopefully, our software solution to this is good. You can see the ribbon cable here. It daisy chains to here, to here, to here. And that one will go over to the next device. Uh, let's go to the I.O. board nice long one uh, hopefully uh, the sim uh, the sim innovations so uh, air manager solution we know is going to be okay for the attitude indicator and the standby altitude airspeed but there was a problem with the rmi and i think that um, between <clears throat> sim innovations fl uh, and uh, s um, flight illusions and myself and picatonga uh, Duncan, uh, we're going to come up with a solution to get the RMI operating correctly using uh, Air Manager uh, instead of G-Step. So hopefully we can get that to work. But I'm really getting uh, looking forward to getting this these gauges operating. Uh, they'll add a lot of immersion to the simulation. Uh, we might do a stream of flight later today. Uh, we can find some good ATC to get onto. 
If not, uh, we'll be back real soon. And thanks for being here. I'm going to go ahead and shut the stream down. And uh, if I can get out of the cockpit, it's a mess in here right now. Let's see, I'm going to have to leave the cockpit to shut it down anyway. So bye bye. Pat the cockpit. Oh, and it's 25 days now till X Plane 12 comes out. If you watched Austin at the. At Oshkosh, he implied 30 days, so today's 25 days till x 12. I am 100% ready. Uh, quick little side note on that. Since I'm running three screens and three computers with x and a server, I have to purchase four copies of x 12. And if you get x 12 and have not had x 11, when you purchase it, you can get x 11 and 12 at the same time. Since 12 is going to be a beta, uh, you'll have 11 uh, as a alternative fallback. Um, so my solution to installing X-Plane 12 and X-Plane 11 is um, I got a larger uh, NMVE, SS, uh, NMVE drive. I got a two terabyte. My one terabyte was getting pretty full. So I'm going to leave X-Plane 11 on the one terabyte side of that two terabyte and the whole unused portion will have X-Plane 12 in the server. Um, and then I'll back up one of my visual computers onto another hard drive and just get rid of the uh, X-Plane 11 on the three, the three visuals. Just throw it away, buy my four copies of X-Plane 12, or um, buy four licenses and one copy, and then move it to each screen and put the license number in. And uh, not put any anything in besides X-Plane 12. No libraries, no sceneries, no Lua scripts, nothing that's going to screw with x 12 and give it a try and uh, kind of start fresh. It's going to be a, a, a big challenge and a lot of fun. And uh, I think we all know it, it's a beta and we know what happens with betas. It's going to be a uh, some growing pains. If, if, if there weren't any problems, I would presume that they uh, weren't looking hard enough. So I would expect uh, there to be updates and if you remember when X-Plan 11 came out they were I mean they were they were removing updates faster than you could install them because of problems so and, and obviously there's going to be lots of other issues with manufacturers uh, sceneries um, I'm pretty sure Zebobot which I fly is going to uh, be on top of it I'm sure that that, that uh, Lupus Zebok has uh, uh, had this high on his radar for uh, 12 coming out uh, so right now we're flying 3.54.3, which is the latest version. No problems. Um, <clears throat> everything seems to be working really good. And a uh, big shout out to uh, my buddy in Florida, um, Swan Sim Productions, and my mate out in New Zealand, uh, Duncan um, Picatonga, who does a lot of the uh, ZHSI and Flight Deck Solutions to XP coding. I talk to him on a regular basis, and he, if it wasn't for him, and Mike, I'd be, um, I wouldn't be flying X-Plane. Uh, big question is, why not Microsoft 2020? Uh, I don't bash anybody's Sims, but unfortunately, I can't use it today because of technical issues with multiple screens. Although MS 2020 has apparently resolved that, and Russ Barlow's video explains it quite well. The problem is, I need a network uh, on three computers. He's demonstrated 1080p using one computer and three screens I mean running 4k which is impossible with one computer one video card at least not the video cards that are in my budget um, so I use 3090s and I need to network like X-Plane can multiple copies of X-Plane on a network MS 2020 doesn't have that capability yet <coughs> excuse me also the problem of downloading scenery like 2020 does um, um, bandwidth wise on four computer three computers in a server is problematic they haven't there's not a solution for that on top of that the coding for all the hardware is still um, being worked on by multiple people uh, it's lots of challenges so like any sim uh, if it I've, I've had more sims than than since 84, you name it, I had it. So x 12 is going to be the next uh, uh, sim du jour, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, again, I'll stop babbling, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.